On behalf of my partner, Will Klein, I'd like to take this brief opportunity to thank the high school coaches of America for their continued and loyal support to the five-star program for over 30 years. Uh, during this period of time, Five Star has been fortunate enough to be a part of 250, actually more than 250, five-star campers going on and playing at least one game in the NBA. But more important to you is the fact that 168 five-star staff members, that's uh, high school coaches and college players, have gone on from our program to college coaching at some level, and 16 of them right to the NBA itself. Now, at Five Star Camp, we have a slogan. We say, fellas and gals, you're at the Five Star Basketball Camp where the teaching never stops. So with that in mind, let the teaching begin. My name is Ed Klimkowski, and I'm going to be lecturing and demonstrating fundamental skills for young basketball players on learning how to play defense. We will start with the initial stages, and hopefully develop this to a point where you can see the advantages of pressure defense as you progress. This is important. I think if you want to play at the next level, you need to learn the fundamental skills of defense. Defense breeds an air of confidence. You make your individual opponent and your opposing teams prepare differently for you. And hopefully today we'll show you some of the mental aspects, the individual aspects, and eventually some of the team concepts that will allow you to begin taking advantage of your position on the court defensively and control the game. first thing that players need to do is be ready to play defense. So we're going to take a look at putting your game face on, put your mask on when you come onto the court so that you are ready to execute these fundamental movements. Playing defense and having a mentality for defense is just as important as any of the movements that I'm going to show you today. So as we begin this, the first thing we're going to concentrate on is the mental approach, the intensity that this player is now going to get into. Okay, Duke, let's go. Down. All right, now he's ready to play. We're looking at his hands. We're looking at his balance. His feet are about equal to his shoulders. All right, what I like to do as Duke moves is to have that weak hand down low so that if the player crosses hands, we'll be able to look for the ball. His eyes are going to be focused right here on my belly button. My belief is wherever this goes, the player goes. And so the concentration here is going to be on the belly button. All right, good defensive intensity, nice balance. Now we're going to slowly begin to push off and move in a direction. Now Duke is going to move to his right, and he's going to touch. Now he's going to move to his left and touch. The reason he's touching is because that's how low we want our players to be on the floor. So it's a kind of reminder that's where you need to be, a self-check. Now we're also going to begin talking about going backwards, the drop step. Let's drop step, Duke. He takes one back, he pushes off, he touches. 
he closes out, he touches again, all right? There are only a few fundamental basketball moves that you need to make. Let's quickly review them. Head on the ball, intensity, hands out, good balance. Push off, go left, stay low. Push back, stay low. Drop step, stay low. Attack forward, stay low, good. The first drill that we're going to do now, working with the team, is to get the guys to come out and show these defensive fundamental slides. We're still concentrating with our head straight. They're going to look at the rim at all times. They're going to stay low, okay? They are going to move forward for attacking a offensive man. They are going to move to the right in anticipation of staying with that man. We are going to introduce the sidelines as another defensive man. So we're gonna show you now the way you really need to move on the basketball court when you're guarding the ball. Okay, now we're gonna move as a team. Individually, we're down in the stance. We're ready and we're moving. Close out, touch, sliding, looking for the line, foot out of bounds, drop step to the middle of the court, slide left, good, three, touch, back to the middle, drop step, head on the rim. Everybody's got their head on the rim. Slow down, think about where your foot movement should be. Good concentration, nice intensity, don't turn your head. Focus on the rim, looks good, everybody's working hard. Stay low, stay low, stay low. Come on, finish up, drop step, drop step, head on the rim, last guy. Come on, help out in the back. Good job, all right. All right, this is the second warm-up defensive drill that we're gonna show you today. This is a drill you young players can work on in the backyard for a few minutes before you start to play. You can get to practice a few minutes and work with your teammate. But we're going to start introducing moving against the ball. And Andrew here is going to assume the defensive stance. Mentally, I want you to take a look at his eyes and his intensity. He's ready to play. That's very important for you young guys, is that you're ready to play. You've got to show this guy you're here to do serious business, all right? He's got his hands out, he's got his weak hand down. We're gonna move to our left. Andrew is gonna push off, he's gonna try to get up on the balls of his feet, and we're gonna move three steps to Andrew's right. Now let's take a look at how close Andrew's gonna be to the ball. And if I put that out there, I want Andrew to be able to take that ball from me. So now already I gotta concentrate on Andrew. Now we're going to move three to the left, weak hand is down. One, two, three. Now if I wanted to change directions and most players use a cross over move, this is where this weak hand comes in. If Andrew can get used to keeping this hand low, as I cross over, he can begin looking for that basketball as opposed to where most guys keep their hands and the quick crossover gets underneath it. We're going to move a little bit to the right. Again, close enough to touch, all right? He is now going to move a little bit to his right on three steps. One, two, three. Now we're going to drop step. If I brought the ball to the basket, Andrew would drop step. One, two, three. Now, if he begins to close me out, I'm going to back dribble. He's coming up. I lose my dribble because he's on the ball, he's aggressive. 
He now throws his hands up and he crosses his hands as opposed to leaving them open, which is the first logical place the pass could go. He wants to close here, yell dead, dead, dead. and now look for his teammates to also begin assuming the defensive overplay stance. All right, now we're going to move the team as a group, and we are going to reiterate some of those small teaching points, starting with the mental attack that they're looking at when they guard the ball, where their hands, where the balance is going to be, and they're going to move in relationship to where I move. Okay, guys, ready? Down. All right, head on the ball. We're going to move to our left first. Keep your opposite hand low for the crossover. Head on the rim, head on the ball here. Ready? Let's move. One, two, three, change. One, two, three, change. Drop step. One, two, three, change. Attack. Two, three, shot. Box. Rotate. Hot foot. Come on, get him up, get him up, get him up, get him up. Five more seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, time. Good. All right, now we're going to start talking about playing the man when he receives the ball. And there are a lot of schools of thought on how your feet should be. I'm going to give you my belief on what you should do when your man receives the ball yet still has his dribble. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate here now. Duke is going to receive the ball. You can do this with your guys in the backyard, and you can practice this move as well as boxing out at the same time. So it's a good fundamental move. I'm going to give Duke the ball, and I'm going to attack Duke. I know Duke is a right-handed player. So most right-handed players use their left foot as their pivot foot. I'm going to come up to Duke and put my front foot to his pivot foot. And what I'm trying to do is dictate which way he can go. I want to take away two of the three possibilities. So our point here in teaching is to get the front foot to his pivot. Now when we start out, Duke is not going to be allowed to dribble. He's going to work and pump fake and pump fake, and my job is to stay down until he finally shoots, and I want to have my left hand up as he shoots, to challenge his shot, shoot it, Duke. And now I want to go get a quick box, big base, and the play is not finished until you get the ball. OK? We're going to have the guys come out now and demonstrate. The first point that I want to emphasize is get your front foot to his pivot. OK? The second point of emphasis here is when he leaves the ground, we want the hand to challenge the shot. Most of these guys are right-handed, so you're going to see the left hand go up, you're going to see the box out come in, and then the release, and go get the basketball. And this doesn't end until you get the basketball. Okay, let's have Travis come out. Front foot to pivot, he stays, he waits, he box, he ball, good. Right. Front foot to pivot, hold, box, ball. All right, let's, let's reverse it, guys. Offense to defense. No dribble, front foot to his pivot, challenge the shot, box out. Okay, play. Front foot to pivot, stay, stay, turn, box, ball. Good. Okay. Get one out now, one at a time. Everybody else underneath. All right. Now, we're going to get the offensive man to actually try to follow his shot. 
So we've t we're taking the technique, front foot to pivot, hold, challenge, put the hand up in the shooter's face. It's your last line of defense. Turn, big box, and then go get the ball. Now, as a part of the drill, what we do is if the offensive man gets the ball back, it costs the defensive man two push-ups. So we want to put a little incentive each time he throws the ball out. Ready? Play. Front foot to pivot, stay, stay, box, turn, ball. Get the ball. OK, let's switch it. Next two, next two. Let's get two new ones. No dribble again. Pass, front foot to pivot, hold, box, turn, ball, get the ball. Good, next. Pass, front foot to pivot, hold, hold, turn, box, ball, ball, play. Good, hop. All right. This is a drill now that is an extension of that front foot to pivot. We're now going to allow the offensive man to dribble the ball. In this particular drill, he must spin dribble before he shoots. The point of emphasis here is Andrew is going to go with his front foot to Duke's pivot. He's going to have his head on the ball. When he passes him the ball, he's ready to play. His hands are on the ball. He's going to challenge the shot. He's going to box out, and the drill does not end until he gets the rebound. OK, let's take a look. Ready? Play. Front foot to pivot. Spin move. There's the box. There's the turn. Here's the ball. Good. OK. Next two. Pass. Front foot to pivot. Must make a spin. Box, turn, ball, pull. Next two. Very good. Step up. Pass, front foot to pivot. Here's the spin, the challenge, rebound, play. And we play this out whether it goes in or it does not go in. We do not stop until the defensive man or the offensive man get the ball in their hands. I don't care where the ball goes. This is a drill that we do every day in practice. It's called one-on-one -on -one with turning, OK? You can practice this at home. You can get to the gym early. It's an offensive and a defensive drill. Right now, we're putting the point of emphasis on defense. The guys are going to play from the baseline to half court in a learning or teaching format. And then when they get to half court, we're going to turn it around into a real game situation. So this is called one-on-one, -on -one, head on the ball, turning the ball. OK, guys. First thing we're doing is three hard dribbles. We're trying to put our foot out of bounds at each of the lines. Stop. Very good. All right. Now let's just move in a little bit more. We're going to hand them the ball. We're going to go front foot to pivot, and we're going to play one-on-one, -on -one, full court. Play. He looks to turn, box, ball, and rebound. OK. Now let's just hold it one second. What we want to try to emphasize here in this drill, this is very important for you young guys, is that as the offensive player goes forward, go ahead. I don't want to see you touching them up here. I don't want to see you bumping them up here. That's a foul. All right, we want to concentrate exclusively on our legs. So as he goes there, we want to get here, see the line, out of bounds. You want to touch to find out how close you are, fine. He goes to the middle, we're working, we're working, foot out of bounds. And then the last one, we're trying to get here and use, if we get him to drift, pick up his dribble, we close the passing lane with the two hands. Pick up the dribbles. Yes. Yeah. 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 One to the middle of the floor. One on one. Front 
foot out of bounds. One, two, three, foot out of bounds. Dead, dead, dead. Into the middle of the floor. Good, play. Run him down, get your balance. Rebound. Play. One, two, three. One, two, three. Get a corner. Foot out of bounds. Dead, dead. In our next drill, we're going to take it and build one more step. This is a problem that comes up with a lot of players, but especially in junior high and high school. What happens when you're closely guarding your man and he makes a move and begins to beat you to the basket? Well, there are a couple of things that we think that are important, and we're going to try to show you two of them as we go through this drill. The one thing that you cannot do is stop. So we're going to give you something to do when your man beats you on the dribble. OK, let's move down here now. We're going to bring Rob and Sean out. We're going to start the drill the same way. Sean is going to hand the ball to Rob, front foot to pivot, three dribbles to the side. What happens when your man beats you? you got to run him down. Get in front. Play. We're playing. We're still playing. We're still playing. OK, stop. This is another defensive fundamental drill that we do every day in practice. It also helps the offensive player handle the ball under pressure. But right now, the point of emphasis is the defensive man keeping his head on the ball trying to drive the offensive man up the sideline, eventually to a point where we can try to put our foot out of bounds and either get a charge or set up a trap situation. So the guys are going to work out of both corners. They're going to be dribbling right-handed and left-handed under tough man-to-man -man pressure. And we are going to concentrate on running our man down and using the sidelines as another defensive aid. So when you see a guy coming up the sidelines, there's something you can do, not just to let him go up the sideline. So let's take a look at one-on-one -on -one to half court. We're going to start right here in the left-hand side. Sean is going to give the ball handler the ball. They're going to play one-on-one, -on -one, and he's going to go up the court with his left hand. Sean's going to run him down, get that foot out of bounds. Good, right there. All right. Nice play right here, had his foot out of bounds. Let's show him with the foot here. This is an ideal situation for your teammate to come over and start forming a trap, OK? Very good job. All right, let's take it from the other side. Hold on. Let's get the front foot to the pivot. This is only a left-hand dribble. Ready, go. All right, head on the ball, head on the ball. Go up that side. Good, foot out of bounds. Good, OK, very good. Dead. Killed the passing lane. All right, switch. Let's go here. All right, we really want this guy with the ball to try to go up that sideline. We want him to beat his man and come up that sideline. And we don't want the defensive man to quit. All right, ready? Play. Good. Up the side here. Get to that line. Find the line. OK. Now that time, the offensive man actually got up the sideline. We would continue to practice and get the defensive man to come somewhere in here and see if he can identify this line and cause the man to lift up his dribble. One more time there. Here we go. Ready? Play. Left hand on the ball, left hand. Good. Find the line. Put it out of bounds. Good. Dead. Very good. OK, very good. next drill is a defensive drill before your man gets the ball. So many times young players are playing against great players, guy gets the ball and he begins to put you in a vulnerable position. He's a very good shooter, he's a very good driver, and you turn and you say, hey coach, what do I do? Well, one of the things that I think you can do to help yourself and your team 
is to learn to play defense before that great player gets the ball. And if you can't keep him from getting the ball, maybe you can push him to an area on the court where he might not be as good a shooter. He might not be as big a threat. And the other players on your team will be able to help, OK? Now, this is an opportunity for a guy to make his team by learning some very basic fundamentals and really working hard at it. You talk about not being a great offensive player. Well, here's a chance for you to come out, learn this technique, and show your coaches how and why you can play on a team even though you're not a great offensive player. It's called overplaying the ball. What we're going to show you now are two techniques. The first one is the way I like to do it. The second one is going to be a more traditional way and the way maybe you've been taught. They're both good. Look at them carefully. Whatever your coach says is the right way to do it, you go ahead and do it that way. The first one is a total overplay by Andrew, and I'm trying to encourage Andrew to not let this man have the ball for three seconds when the ball is in the offensive front court. Now let's take a look at some of the positioning and hands and eyes that Andrew is going to employ in the overplay. The first thing Andrew is going to do is he's going to split his defensive man with his leg. He's going to get his inside forearm right in here and get a little feel for the offensive man. He's going to use split vision. He's going to have one eye on the offensive player, and he's going to try to get a piece of the ball with his left eye. He's going to have his hand extended so that if he's a little bit late, he still may have access to tapping the ball away. Now, this is the start position. Now, it gets more difficult when the offensive man begins to move. So we're going to try to get Andrew not to move on the first step. Now, when we play, blow the whistle, the offensive man is going to try to make the entry pass to Rob here. And right now, we're going to try to keep the ball out of his hand for three seconds, OK? So the defensive man is going to start on top with the ball. He's going to hand it, front foot to pivot, play. Stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up, stay up. Three, four, five, good. Excellent defense. Now, why is that excellent defense? Because he went to an area on the other side of the court where our team defense should be over in this area helping Andrew out. Now, let's reiterate real quickly. This particular style of overplay was a complete denial. Let's assume this is the best player on the other team. All right, we want to keep the ball out of his hands. All right. Andrew is up tough. Let's begin to play. Play. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Time. Now, for five seconds, Andrew played great overplay defense. If Rob should have been fortunate to get the ball here, look at the distance now that Rob has to go to the basket to either shoot or drive. OK? So, the next best thing of keeping the ball out of his hand was to put him in an area on the court where he cannot hurt you immediately upon catching the ball. That was very good defense. Now, the, the second technique one that you might be more familiar with is the overplay, the extension, the split, the split vision, the contact, and now very slowly the player fakes to the ball and he goes back door. Now the first time Andrew played him straight on and didn't open. On this particular technique, as the offensive player goes back door, Andrew is going to pivot. He's going to open up, he's going to see the ball, and he's going to drop his hand. Let's take another look at that. So we're going to pivot, one step, pivot, drop your hand, because we're looking for the bounce pass, and try to close the distance up 
and feel this man all the way through. So let's try that move now. Now again, we're trying to keep the ball out of his hands for three seconds. If this defensive man can do his job and pressure this man, we're hoping that at the end of three seconds, he'll go someplace else with the ball. All right, split him, hand, eye, okay, ball, play. One, two, there's the open, here's the close. All right, good, stop. Very good defense. He caught the ball, I think, in an area where he still has to dribble it to shoot it. Very good job, guys. Very good. In this next sequence, we're going to talk about incorporating pressure on the ball, overplaying the forward or wing pass, and now bringing into what happens when your player, your offensive player, takes you into the low post, okay? Now, the thing that you have to remember is this is all built on a team concept. In that first little sequence that I showed you before on the back door, you would need to have team defensive help in the back to, in order to employ that style of play. So let's think right now fundamentals but this is eventually developing into a team game. The offensive man is going to start with the ball. He's going to dribble the ball over to the wing. The wing player who did not get the ball is now going to try to go and set up in the low post. So what happens when your man takes you in the low post? There are a couple of things you can do. This is one that I think would be most beneficial for you. The ball is going to start on top, front foot to pivot. We're going to begin with the dribble. There's the overplay. Let's go. One, two, three. We're down. We're in the low post, and we are fronting the low post. OK? Good. Four. Time. Stop. OK, everybody just stay where they are. Now, this defensive man did a nice job. He stayed with his man, and he eventually got the ball handler to pick his dribble up. The first thing he's yelling is dead to let his teammates know that he has no more dribble. He's sealing the most obvious passing lane, which is here, by closing and coming up on the passer. The defensive man here, Andrew, was overplaying very nicely. Let's get back. Let's walk through offense. He took him into the low post. Andrew kept contact. He set up low. Andrew turned around, fronted, put his hands up, and yells to his teammates, help in the back, help in the back. And all this time, he's trying to seek some contact as to where the offensive player is. Now, the first big advantage of putting the man in front is that it keeps you from getting posted up, especially with fouls. When you've got four or five fouls, you might have a very tough player in there to defend. The second thing is if the ball handler kept his dribble alive and began to drive to the baseline and beat Sean, now as he goes down, Andrew is in a position to come out here and stop the ball, maybe trap, and set up a sequence right here where he can help I realize we have a man in the low post, but again, that is that team help coming over, and now we're beginning to rotate. So the point here is, when your man takes you into the low post, try to front him, and at the same time, try to tell your teammates that you need help. Put your hands up, try to sit or seek contact, and take away that initial entry pass. Let's try it one more time, guys. All right, pressure on the ball. Let him give it to you first. Front foot to pivot. Ready? Play. Here's the overplay extension. Good. Three. Good. Low post. Good. 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 Everybody up. Two, three, four. Time. Good. Very good. All right, nice job. Nice job. Now, 
Now this drill, as I indicated earlier, as a defensive basketball player, you need to be able to stop your man, and you also need to be able to help your teammate. We are now starting to talk about helping your teammate. What can you do when your teammate gets beat? So we're going to call this a help and recover drill. We're also going to incorporate the move of closing your player out. So we're going to set up a situation, two against one, where the defensive man is going to have responsibility of helping his teammate and then recovering back to his original man. All right? And if each player on the team can begin to learn this tactic as a group, you should become a better defensive team. This is a fundamental of all good, sound defensive players. Let's take a look at the help and recover. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the ball here on the wing. And the offensive player is going to make a move against his defensive player and get free and come to the basket. Andrew, who at this time is guarding the man at the top of the key, will have the responsibility of coming over and stopping the ball to help his teammate. After he successfully stops the ball, he will need to recover back to his original man. Okay? Help and recover. We start out saying that this is his man, but we want him to be two steps in the direction of the ball. So this is my man, and this is my help. And I try to get a good split vision of both my man and the ball. So if in the event that Rob makes that move against my teammate and comes to the basket, I leave and I stop the ball. Once I've stopped the ball and he passes back to my man, I need to close him out. Now for the drill purpose, we're not going to let Sean take a dribble. All he can do is shoot. Andrew's job is going to be run half the distance between him and Sean. As he gets halfway, he's going to go in the defensive stance, and he's going to begin closing out. With his left hand up, Sean is going to shoot the shot, he's going to challenge the shot, he's going to box out, and then he's going to go get the ball. Okay? Help and recover. So you do not say, I'm just guarding the ball. This is a team game, and this is one of the tactics that you are going to have to learn how to do to be a better team basketball player. So we want to put Andrew in a position where he can help and recover. Rob's going to take a hard dribble down. He's going to try to get to the basket. There's the stop. There's the recover. There's the challenge. Here's the rebound. Good. Okay, let's get Chris in there for the same shot. Coming in, Andrew stops the ball, recovers, closes, and rebound. Okay, now we're going to let that offensive player be able to dribble. And the problem here with most players is that you have a tendency to run too fast. And when you get here, the offensive man gives you a good fake, you go by, and he begins to go to the basket. So that's why we say, after you stop the ball, you run half the distance, and now you close on the shooter's hand, at the same time being aware if he makes a move, you're playing him. So let's try it now with the offensive man being allowed to dribble. Rob comes down, there's the stop, here's the fake, and there it is. Okay, play, play. Okay, Andrew did an excellent job. He stopped the ball. He recovered to his man just a little bit too fast because Sean gave him a good head fake with the ball and was able to go around him. So Andrew needs 
to slow down just a little bit. He was close enough to stop the shot. And that's the first thing you want to do, is stop that three-point shot. Okay? But now he needs to get under control so that if Sean makes his move, he can recover. Let's get Chris up there. Hard dribble. He stops. He recovers. He's under control. Now we play. He stays down. He boxes ball. Good. There's a good sequence right there. Excellent. This is going to be another two-on-two -two situation with defending the screen. There are a number of ways to defend the screen. I'm going to show you one. If your coach is showing you another way, you continue to do what your coach says. If you don't know, this might be a way to help you. Remember, I'm always trying to build these individual fundamentals so that they revolve around the team. And in this particular drill, I'm going to be on the defensive team giving help to my teammates, all right? So we're going to talk about two on two, how to defend the screen. The ball's going to start out on top. Chris is going to make an entry pass after Rob has worked hard to get the ball. Let's walk through it once. He hits him. Chris is going to go screen. We hear the talk. There's the screen. We want to jump the screen right there. We're going to jump the guy with the ball. Now, the screen man has two possibilities. He could roll to the basket, or when he sees the trap, he can fan here and look for the three-point shot. Now, I'm going to be in the back as the third guy talking about help and closing out the shooter if it should come up. I want to pick this up a little bit faster, more talk on defense. I want to jump the screen. All right, I'm in the back, I'm the third guy. All right, I'm in the back, Andrew, let's go. I got your help, I got your help, I got your help, I got your help, I got your help here. Good, I got him Jump him. Now I recover, I close, I box, and I bomb. Okay? So everybody rotated. Let's bring it right back here where the screen was. Here's the screen. Sean called screen left. He showed himself. As Rob came off, we jumped him. We don't want him to cut the corner. We want him to lift. We want to put him in the trap. We want to make this pass as hard as we can to Chris, who is fanned out. Back here was the defensive man helping. He sees the pass. He runs half the distance. He closes his left hands on the shooter. The shooter shoots. You turn, you box, you get the ball, and again, when we do this, we're in transition for full court. Two on two, jumping the screen. One more time. Pressure the ball, front foot to pivot, entry. Jump it, jump it. Recover, box, ball, hold. Another two-on-two -two defensive situation. Earlier in the tape, we showed you about trying to keep the ball out of the top offensive player's hands by overplaying. There will be times during the course of the year that you'll play against a guy who is very good with the ball in his hand, and we want to try to take that ball and either double-team him, jump-switch him, but get him to give up the ball and put it in the hands of another player. So on this particular drill, we're going to set up a run and jump, where the offensive man at the point is going to pass the ball to the forward, and then the defensive guy is going to run at him. Now, the reason we are running at him is that we want to try to get the ball out of his hand. All right, we want to try to get the ball out of his hand. Now, the second time, we, we might run at him is when he catches the ball here and he starts to dribble it or dribble away, all right? So when you catch it now, we want you to take a dribble with it, all right? And we are going to run and jump, all right? Trying to get 
that key offensive man to give up the ball. All right, starts on top, two on two, hand, entry, he dribbles, he runs, they recover, play, all right, same situation, take away the inside cut, hold up, hold up, here's the recovery, box, ball, pull, rebound. All right, that was an, that was an excellent sequence because what we did is we did the run and jump, we took the ball out of the key man's hands, we set it up again and showed you the inside cut. We had defensive help. We did the closeout. So in that play, we actually showed three or four individual techniques all put together. And then once again, on that shot, we would then go normally into transition. In our last defensive drill this morning, we're going to move into a three-on-three -three situation. We're going to try to incorporate all the fundamental moves individually and some team concepts that we talked about throughout this film. In this particular drill, we're playing three-on-three. -three. We have some rules. First rule is that the offense has to make two passes before they can score. They have 10 seconds to score. So we start with three offensive players out here in the lanes at half court, three defensive players under the basket. There is absolutely no switching. As this drill would progress, if the defense did not talk, that would automatically qualify for two push-ups. All right, so we want to try to bring in all the team concepts individually and team that we talked about this morning. All right, I'll start to play by handing the ball to one of the offensive players. They have 10 seconds to score, but they must make two passes. Defense cannot switch. Okay, ready? Here we go. Play. Nine, eight, help in the lane, help in the lane, seven, help in the lane, six, five, help and recover, four, rebound, play. Okay, set it up again. Offense to defense, let's switch. All right, ready, play, 10, 9, help, talk, where's the talk, where's the help in the middle, help in the lane, help in the middle, recover ball. Okay, switch, again, quickly, offense to defense. Not enough talk, guys, not enough talk on D. Play, 10, 9, where's the ball, don't turn your head, get in the lane, stay in the lane, Duke, Duke in the lane, get in front, good, set the screen, ball, play. Okay, all right, one more time, quickly. Pass, go away, guys. Pass, go away. Go. Nine. Eight. Get through. Set. Help, Sean. Jump it, jump it. Recover, recover. Good, close. Good, front to post. Good, double. All right, play, play. Play, set it up again. Good, play, play. Jump the screen, Travis. Recover. Ball, play, set it up again, quickly. Recover, help, help, Sean. Good, help, Travis. Travis, good, I think it's a charge. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you young basketball players, and I hope that this film has given you an opportunity to see what the defensive aspect of the game can do for you. It can put you in great physical condition. You can get the tag name of a player. That's what you want people to call you, a player. You want to be called a hard worker, all right? This is something that you can do with a lot of hard work, a lot of intensity. You can build a championship team very quickly by playing defense. You need to learn the fundamentals. If you watch the film, you'll notice that the guys that were in the film gave 100%. No one went through the motions. They didn't have a bad day. They came to play. So mentally, when you walk out on the court, you have to put the mask on. You have to be in charge of what's going on. We tried to show you a few fundamental techniques. All right? These are important for your development. If you want to play at the next level, you have to be able to stop your man. 
You have to be able to help your teammate. And through hard work and through desire, we can take a guy with limited offensive skills and bring him right to the front, maybe even become a starter. And people will wonder why. But if you break the team down and you see that he's giving you that type of defensive effort, it might be the reason your team wins this season.